And finally, new rule. The smartest thing Democrats did this year was finding their patriotism again. If you told me a year ago that if Kamala Harris would be the nominee and in her acceptance speech, she would use the word privilege, I would not have guessed that she used it the way she did. The greatest <clears throat> privilege on earth, the privilege and pride of being an American. Yeah, and Tim Walz also began his speech with a great line saying, we're all here tonight for one beautiful, simple reason. We love this country. And yet this message doesn't seem to be catching on with a lot of the younger people. None of them are standing up and screaming, that's my country. Quite the, <laughs> quite the reverse. <laughs> quite the reverse, the protests that started off as justice for Palestine have morphed into a broader kind of, America is the problem. We fucked up the whole world thing. Last weekend, there was a pro-Palestine rally in Seattle, and when the rapper Macklemore said, fuck America, everybody loved it. Yeah, fuck America. Yeah, I'm sure it was a big hit with the Queers for Gaza crowd. <laughs> Literally advocating for a government that would imprison you or kill you for being queer from the safety and security of a country that doesn't do that. Yes, America, the only place in the world where a white guy from the suburbs could become a millionaire rapper because here every person, regardless of race, class, or gender, has the right to be talent-free. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what document <clears throat> allows you to protest and chant, hey, hey, ho, ho, followed by something really stupid? <laughs> yeah. Constitution Day was last week. It's an actual federal holiday, but no one noticed, despite the fact that it's probably the greatest legal document ever. Is it flawed? Of course. It was written by humans, and they were all white men, as depicted in this illustration from Google AI. <laughs> <clears throat> but how about looking at the actual ideas in it? I won't hold my breath for that, because only 14% of eighth graders are proficient in history now, and only 22% in civics, which may be why four in 10 Gen Zers say the authors of the Constitution are best described as villains. Wow. It's amazing, since in, 1970, 19, in 1776, James Monroe was 18, Alexander Hamilton was 21, and James Madison, 25. Joe Biden was only 30. <laughs> America's founders, they were the Gen Z of their day. And when they were your age, they started a country. What the fuck have you done? <laughs> so no, the, <clears throat> the Constitution isn't perfect because it wasn't written by Taylor Swift, but... <laughs> And yes, the founders made excruciating compromises, obviously slavery. But slavery was a deal breaker for the southern states. So there would have been two countries. And then to end slavery in North America, it would have involved invading a so sovereign nation instead of having the moral high ground of keeping a union together. Would that have been better? History's complicated, and Gen Z reasoning is not. They think they're pure, but they're really just simplistic. They know two things. White people did some very bad things, and no, that's it. That's all they did. <laughs> that's what they know. Well, I know that too, but I also know other things. <laughs> like how in 1776, slavery was a lot like flying private today. If you could afford to, you would have done it too. Everybody did it of all races throughout history, in the Bible, and all over the world. If you hate George Washington for slavery, are you prepared to hate the woman king? Because her empire was built on it too. And where do you imagine is this place 
outside of your brilliant, pure minds, that's so much better than America. At least America self-corrects, a mechanism for which was actually written into the Constitution. The citizens of Gaza cannot assemble in protest of their own government, cannot do or say what they want, or practice whatever religion they want, or have a free press. All rights guaranteed in just our First Amendment. <laughs> the irony is, in all this, is that the world the founders birthed, flawed though it may be, provides the bedrock for everything that makes life good for the very people who hate them so much. It's so easy to take for granted individual liberty, a bill of rights, the rule of law, checks and balances, getting a trial by jury, the peaceful transfer of power, protecting minority rights, and democracy itself. But those are the things that make our pampered, privileged, bratty lives so relatively cushy. No one starves here. Even our poor people are fat. <laughs> Not everyone has to be bribed. Anyone can get rich. The cops are flawed, but we're not a police state. The drinks don't make you go blind, and no one pushes you out of a window for a bad Yelp review. <laughs> Our government takes a lot and fucks up a lot, but it also gives a lot. Health care, retirement money, unemployment, disability, college grants, food stamps. Maybe in the blissfully perspective-free mind, this all adds up to a low bar that America has reached. But you have to ask, why do millions of people every year risk their lives to come here? Because... Because they want what we got. The founders were flawed, but they did build a place the whole world wants to break into. No one is paying a coyote to smuggle them into India or Russia. <laughs> Immigrants don't see us as the problem. They see us as the solution. And there's a reason they kill themselves to get here, and it's not just the ponds full of delicious ducks and geese.